When I was 17 years old, I went upstate on a, on a, on a trip for Shabbos with uh, my best friend, Benny Keller. And we had a great time. And, uh, you know, we were enjoying ourselves, 16, 17 years old, until I woke up in the morning in the tent. And I turned over, and my best friend was laying there dead. A little over two years ago, someone called me up to say that Benny's father was molesting kids. And he made a program in memory of him to help out kids at risk called Gesher Ben Sion. And a kid came forward from there that he was using this, this program and he, he used it to molest the kid. At first I, I couldn't believe it, I was shocked. I, I, I was frozen, my stomach was, was turning inside out. And I decided I'm gonna do an investigation of every single person that ever walked Inside his house, I'm gonna call. I made lists of every friend and friends of friends. And I went through it and I called up one person and I called up another person and another person. And lo and behold, a few of my friends were molested by him. And many of my friends were molested by many other people that they never told, they never told anybody. They're, they're living in the silence. They're, they may have told one person in their life. They never went to therapy. They never did anything. If they, they told to rabbis, rabbis covered it up. They, it, it, it was just, there was nothing, there was, there was no one to turn to. Slowly by slowly we built, you know, a, a list as every person I called, you know, it was like every three people, two of them, you know, one of them was abused, another person had a friend that was abused, or he knew this story, and we started writing everything down. And we realized how these cases would go in front of Rabbanim, they would go in front of the leaders of our community, and what would happen? The rabbi would say, I promise I won't do it again and I'm gonna go for therapy. Go for therapy for two years and then boom, he's at the same thing. Moshe Keller was known about by the basin of Crown Heights, by, by two other big rabbis in Crown Heights. Three times it went in front of people and he continued to molest people and molested my friends. The, their, their lives are destroyed until this day. Some of them I look at. And I, I can't explain how bad it is, and this is, this is why Jewish Community Watch exists. Because there's so many people out there and there are people just getting away with it. You know, it, it, some people that will get her therapy, they'll, the, they'll, they'll get help, they'll be able to try to live, you know, happy, normal lives, but so many other people out there, their lives are being destroyed. And no one in the community is doing anything. You know, somebody mentioned before that what about the, the, the enablers? Their days are coming. The people that have enabled child molesters and have let them literally destroy children's lives, their day will also, the community will know about them. The main goal of Jewish Community Watch and the way it started was to inform the community of the danger to their children and provide a haven for other victims who may want to come forward. We're not here to try to prove whether someone's guilty, whether someone's innocent. We are here to let you know, keep your children away from this person. If you want to go ahead and let your child be with that person, you are the one that's putting your child at risk. The website also served as to let the world know that we will no longer stay silent. And that victims should no longer be afraid. And we will be by your side all the way. In the beginning, when the site was opened up, we, there was an inbox that we couldn't even find. We didn't even know, just emails were coming in left and right until one day we opened it up. Literally hundreds of emails. Crown Heights, Florida, California, Montreal, London, Israel, Australia, stories from ages of 15 to people in their 80s of people being abused and reporting their stories. Our database is massive, is massive. This is a small little percentage of people we've exposed. It's, yeah. so over the last two years, many people have questioned the methods of Jewish Community Watch. 
people claim we don't con conduct proper investigations, people are exposed just off rumors are, were heard. Every day I hear the accusation that we're here to destroy families, we're here to destroy Chabad, we're here to do this, and it's revenge. It, there's every, every single excuse out there why we're doing this. And it kills me, it kills me inside that people will actually think that we are so careless. JCW started and will always be to protect children. There will never be any other goal in mind besides protecting children, bringing justice to people that never had it before. You know, for, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say any names over here, but there was, there was one person that we exposed and the victim was actually able to finally sleep at night. Finally, for the first time in years, was able to sleep at night knowing that this teacher that molested him will not climb in his window and molest him. This is how the person used to have nightmares. In New York State, you know, Benny was talking about the statute of limitation in New York that the, you have until 20 for certain, for certain misdemeanors and then for felonies you have until 23. Most victims will not come forward until they're la later on in their life. Until they, they probably never will, especially with the community and, and, and how we, we deal with victims. People don't support victims. They support the perpetrators. But every shop is say, well, oh, it's not true. Oh, this is not. It's, it's every single excuse. You know, victims are, 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 are threatened and bribed not to come forward. Even the emotional trauma of reliving the nightmare going in you know, a public trial can also discourage people from reporting. About a year ago, I said that's it, I'm done. I had enough, I'm not, I, I can't do this anymore. Every day news stories of kids getting raped, molested, sodomized. To me, it affected me, and it will affect any person with the stories that you'll hear. And I decided that's it. I wake up one morning and I'm done. I'm closing down the site. I close down the website. I'm laying in bed thinking if my boss is going to give my ex boss is going to give me my job back, I could go back and live a normal life. I'm laying in bed for a good few hours, and I get a phone call from a mom, and she's crying how her daughter was molested. While I sat on the phone with her for an hour, Tears coming down my face, I turned the site back on. And I said, there is no way we can stop this. There is no way. This is, this has to continue. You know, I'm, I'm about to get a little graphic right now, but this is just so parents will wake up and really know how bad it is. A while back, another mother contacted me when she discovered that her daughter was being molested. It, the abuser was a close family friend that would come every Shabbos. Just like Patty says, it's not the icky people. It's not the strangers. It's the people that you trust in, in your homes. By the Shabbos table, there is, unfortunately, this person was arre wasn't arrested. He is on the website. This person was having the nine-year-old girl masturbate him at the Shabbos table while the entire family was sitting at the table. This happens, and then he used to take her into the back room. I'm not sure what happened there, and I... This stuff happens, and it happens way too often, and the statistics show that. People were, were, were saying about a, a, you know, a, a recent video when we came out with Project MS, we're coming off so tough against staff members, and I want to go into a little bit just in camps, and you know, I, I know two people that, both of them, one of them, their father, told him, if anybody touches you in camp, tell me, tell me, tell me what's going, tell me what happened, I'm going to come, I'm going to go beat the guy up, I'm going to beat the counselor up. His son goes to camp and he's having the, the most awesome summer. His counselor's coming and masturbating him. Person's exposed, he's arrested already, and he's masturbating him. This boy, even though his father said that he was gonna come and beat this person up, he was too afraid that he's gonna be embarrassed in front of all his friends, he's gonna be pulled out of camp. That's it, his summer was gonna be gone. 
Another story, a mother tells her, her son, if anybody, if anybody touches you, let me know, and you know, I'm gonna do something about it. The boy goes to camp, and what happens? Not his counselor, but the counselor next door is giving him Rebbe cards, pictures of the Rebbe. He is the coolest kid now. Why is he the coolest kid? He's the most famous kid. He has the most Rebbe cards. This boy cannot even look at a person with a beard. He hates anybody, anybody with a beard. He, he says, Mayor, what, why are you even trying to help this community out? They're disgusting. What, what's going on here? He, this boy's life was, was ripped. He, he, he doesn't want to have anything to do with the Yiddishkeit ever again. If that video came out 10 years ago, when these two stories took place, I guarantee you those staff members would have thought twice about molesting these kids and many other. And this is what it is. These people have to be scared. They have to know that the community will support JCW and say, you know what, if you touch a child, we're not going to allow you in our show. We're going to send you flying. We're going to kick you out of our community. You have to be there for the victims. If you want people to go forward to the police, which many people can get arrested right now, that are perpetrators in our community getting away scot-free, you have to support victims. You have to encourage them to go to the police. They must get locked up. There is, there is no ifs and ands. We have to be there for the victims. Since JCW started, it started with just one man, and now it has grown to many, many professionals have joined us, thank God, and are guiding us and, and, and helping us, and, and many volunteers. God willing, in the next month or two, many of the, advi the advisory board will come out publicly so people know it's not just Mayor Seawald. This is many people out there. These are many parents professionals that are caring, that are there to help, so to help guide to make sure that there is transparency and everything is happening correctly. For too long, communities worldwide have turned a blind eye to the epidemic of child abuse. The victims of Maisha Keller, the father of my close friend who passed away, didn't have anyone to help them. When they reported to the, the abuse to the leaders, they were disbelieved. For the first time in decades, victims now have a place to turn to, a place where they will be believed, a place that we will stand by their side. And I look at as every single victim out there, boy or girl, as my brother, and I will do everything to protect them. And same too, the whole team behind JCW will be there to support them. Finally, the tables have turned. Now child molesters are the ones that are in fear. People will, will look at advocates and say, why are you guys so crazy, emotional? Well, what's going on? You guys are all over the place. Look, he's a Meshuggah now. Look, he's saying all this. Oh, how can you have any, anything to do with him? Mayor Seawold's nuts. When you hear what I've heard, you'll also be nuts. You'll have many nightmares as well. And deep inside, every single victim that are hearing these stories from children, from adults, inside we're yearning to the community to just wake up, just understand what's going on. Understand how bad it is. There are children crying. They, they want to be heard. And instead, it's falling on deaf ears because everybody knows this person and knows that person. All of a sudden, it can't be true. You know, with every person exposed, we've gained another 5 to 50 people that will hate us. They will find every way to discredit us. But that will not stop us because we will continue on our mission. It says, if I'm correct, in the Sakta Saita, that in the times before Mashiach comes, the youth will put the old to shame. Now is that time. When Moshe Rabbeinu froze in the sight of immorality, Pinchas, who was two generations younger than Moshe, stepped up and did what was right. Each and every one of us in this room have to be that Pinchas. Our leaders have frozen. They are literally frozen. They are not doing anything to fight this epidemic of child sexual abuse in our community. 
And each one of us has to get involved in one way or the other to help put an end to this, become a public supporter of JCW, help out funds with victims, support the site. If you're a therapist, we have victims that need help that don't have money. Any way that you can help out, we want your help. We want you part of JCW. This is not just a few people. This is a community organization that everybody has to get involved in. I'm gonna end off with, there was a father, another friend of mine's father, who was against JCW. You'd always talk bad, eh, this, that, da, da, da. Until his son came to him and told him how he was molested and how he came to us for help and we helped him out and was a shoulder of support for him. Now he's, now he's one of the biggest supporters publicly of us. Why am I telling you this? Because you should not wait until your child or someone very close to you gets molested for you to believe this is the right thing and this is the right cause. Look at every single Jewish child that is being molested as your son, your daughter, your brother, and your sister, and take it personal. And that is the only way we will make a difference. And this is the only way we can fight this. Just think about it. A child that was molested is your son. And what you would do to stand up for that child, that's how every Jewish child should be. With that, thank you everybody for coming. May we only hear good news.